Well, uh, somebody asked me, well, what is the, what's one thing you learned on Life on the Road that's really stuck with you, made a lasting impact on you, maybe changed your life? Well, I'll tell you what it is. Better than that, I'll show you in just a minute, but, you know, people get all antsy, and they get wired up, they see something they don't like, next thing you know, they got their panties in a wad. That ain't no pretty sight. So I'm going to show you how to take care of that. Now, you watch real close. You take them things, when they start getting all knotted up, you take them things and you just reach up here and you just stretch them out over your hat, right there just like that. You do that, you'll never have another problem with your panties getting in a wad, I guarantee. Don't forget, change your blinker fluid and change it often. Blinker fluid. Blinker fluid. Blinker fluid. Blinker fluid. Okay, the Key Lime Rally Seminar, um, I learned how to um, change my blinker fluid. So I've opened the engine compartment. I believe this thing is the engine. And this is the, that's where you put the blinker fluid. The blinker, blinker fluid reservoir, they called it. Um, right? Is that what it, yeah, it's the blinker fluid reservoir. That was the technical term. The Key Lime Rally Seminar. That's what I learned. Hey. Hey, honey. The blinker fluid goes in the, the one marked 710, right? Honey, what are you doing? Me? Yes, you. I was trying to put some blinker fluid in and I didn't find any in the garage, so I know sometimes this kind of stuff helps me to see the blinkers easier, so I thought maybe I could use it. It's clear. Isn't the blinker fluid usually clear? I don't know. What do you think? Next. I'm just wondering, would somebody Tell me where the hell to put blinker fluid in this damn golf cart and jet ski. I can't figure it out. It's driving me nuts. There's a scam being perpetuated by certain very important members of this group. They have ties to the blinker fluid companies. They'd like you to believe that it's important for you to change your blinker fluid twice a year. Folks, that is patently untrue. Blinker fluid only needs to be changed one time per year. Hey everybody, I've got some advice I have never heard from any other RV group on the whole entire internet. I don't know why everybody doesn't know this. It's about nighttime camping. Every campground I've ever been to, it's completely dark. You can't see anything. How do you get to the bathhouse and back? How do you take your dog for a walk? You have no idea what's going on in the dark. I'll show you the way that we camp and everybody ought to camp. It's going to catch on. Look at this. Jerry, show him the RV. Yay! See how lit up it is? It's beautiful. You can see the lights on the inside. We got a floodlight on the outside. We got lights underneath the awning. The awning's not out, but the lights are on. We got a night light by the door. There is no way you're going to miss this camper. Uh, isn't this nice? You know what this is? This is dark. This is what happens at night when you're out in a campground. You can look up in the sky and you can see stars. You can look out and see lightning bugs flying around. You can smell a campfire. It's so peaceful. It's why you leave the city, is to get this nice, peaceful feeling. You know what you don't want? You don't want the thing to turn into a landing zone for the International Space Station. You don't want to be in at the Atlanta airport. You want dark and peaceful. Turn the light off. Boom! Ha! This is what you need to take care of them flies. The best advice that I've received from the group 
is take it with a grain of salt. All right, all you 50 and over RVers, here's what you want to do for the winter heat. First, what you got to do, there's your battery. Positive, negative. All right, there's one. There's the other one. Now, what you want to do is you want to take this here red one and this here black one, and you want to switch them. So you put this one over here like this. Uh oh, oh, yeah, don't worry about the sparks. Once you get it hooked up, you will have the winter hookups. There we go. Now we got her done. That's all you got to do. Your battery is now ready to heat the winter. The best advice I've ever gotten from this group was that when you change your clocks back in the fall, make sure and change the air in your tires and your RV. Um, you don't want the heavy, hot summer air in there. You'll need the crisper, cooler fall air. Given some fantastic information from some key limers that don't have any idea why we didn't already know this, but in case you don't, I'm going to share it. If you're headed particularly to the mountains, anytime, but particularly to the mountains, where the roads are real curvy and there's hairpin turns and the road's banked, if you will adjust the air in your tires and make every tire different, then as you go on these sharp curves and the roads tilted and all, it will smooth out your ride so much better. Isn't that great? Another great thing that I learned at the Key Lime Seminar Maintenance uh, Seminar, the session, was how to turn my, change my summer air into winter air because it's it's getting cold now so you need to take out the summer air and put in winter air in your tires okay and there are people around here that help with that and let's see who do we have helping today oh mark ryan is going to help today change out my summer air to winter air in my tires thank you mr ryan a lot different than you do on Facebook. The best advice I think I can give a new member is for them to scroll. If you don't like something that was posted, it offended you, um, just scroll. Spin that mouse wheel like you are standing next to Bob Barker on The Price is Right trying to win the big $10,000. Fell on down on her butt. Ugh. Listen, there is a lot of good RV advice coming from all the wonderful people in this group. But the very best and most serious advice I can offer anybody is this one little thing. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep your fingers scrolling. Keep those fingers scrolling real hard. Because that's the best way to keep the peace around here. From time to time, you'll see people, new people in, in particular, uh, this is kind of aimed at the newbies, uh, wondering, you know, what what kind of things do you take with you to decorate your side? I'm not an overly outgoing person. I, I, don't, I seldom set up a rug or, you know, uh, chairs or any of that stuff outside. I want to sit inside where the air conditioning and the heat is and watch my gun smoke and stuff. But the one thing I will never leave home without. Yeah, see how good that works? Yeah. See, and you might not want to play them on Sunday morning because everybody might think you're having church service at your site and you'll be crowded up over there. So keep that in mind. You, you just kind of got to be careful how you use these things. They're dangerous. Hi, Key Limers. Um, just want to let y'all know that something I really learned uh, being part of 50 and over was a lot about toilet paper. I didn't know there was so much to know. But I did figure out through all the different input that if one ply is good, two ply is even better. So stock up. There you can see in the background the Key Lime brand back there. It's hard to find, but you know it is a preferred brand if you can get it. So stock up on as much as you can get because you never know if you're going to eat a whole key lime pie or somebody's going to mail you some cookies and you're going to need all of it you can get. So see, get you a stock and keep listening to the 50s and over for more tips.
Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope y'all have a good rally. Hey y'all! Happy year day to you! Happy wine day to you! Happy, Happy drinking day to everyone! May your rally days be fun! <laughs> yeah! Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Let's get this game on. Come on, baby. Let's get this game on.